Welcome to today's planning and zoning meeting, April 15th, 2015. We have some items on the consent agenda that we will go through first. We've got a couple blue cards on the last item that's not on consent. Just a note that there was a request to speak, but no name on it. So we'll have to get to that when we cover that case. And um, board member Allen has agreed to read the consent agenda. Thank you. The first item is item number 3A. Z1511, District 2, 4418 East University Drive, located east of the northeast corner of University and Greenfield Road, approximately 3.38 acres. Site plan review. This request will allow for the development of a two-tenant retail building. Recommendation continuance to the May 20th, 2015 meeting. The next item is 3C. Z1513, District 6, 1142 South Signal Butte Road, located at the northwest corner of Southern Avenue and Signal Butte Road, one acre. Site plan modification. This request will allow for the development of a restaurant with a drive through. Recommendation approval with conditions. Also, the minutes. The other uh, item is 2A. It's the minutes from the March 24th and March 25th, 2015 study sessions and regular hearing. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as read. Do we have a second? I'll second. One vote. Um, it passes unanimous with DeBella absent. Okay, the next item on the... Agenda is PZ15531, Z1512 is the zoning case number, District 1, 809 North Dobson Road, located south of the Loop 202 on the east side of Dobson Road, approximately 2.44 acres, site plan review and special use permit. I understand the applicant wants to speak on this, but maybe we can have an overview by staff real quick. Good afternoon, Chairman and member of the board. Uh, as you mentioned, this is a request for site plan and special use permit for a proposed uh, gas station with car wash and a sea store. Uh, this is uh, the parcel size is 2.44 acres. It's zoned currently as LCPAD, uh, and it is uh, general plan designation is regional scale mixed use activity district. Staff has been working with the applicant for quite some time, and we recognize the applicant that has tried uh, a lot of options and also recognize that they're trying to provide us uh, the pedestrian connections between the Riverview Park on the west side and the development on the east side. So, but the applicant also kind of mem uh, mentions to us that the layout, which is our bigger issue staff-wise, it staff's concern is not necessarily the use. It's an appropriate use. We also recognize it's a use that that is required there. We don't have too many convenience stores there, and it will be heavily used also, we anticipate, because it's next to the park. But the applicant uh, kind of uh, tells us that that's the model will run work for their business so even if they accept staff's comments and does <coughs> revise the site plan it's not going may not be successful in long time long term so i'm not going to go through the uh, staff uh, report as you mentioned you just want a summary so because of a lot of concern and also citizens participation plan uh, uh, report came late uh, staff's recommendation at this point is to continue the case to the next months. Uh, that will provide uh, the applicant to address the issues we all have here in the staff report identified. Staff also mentions in that uh, conclusion that if the applicant uh, thinks that they cannot do any changes anymore, we want to share also that most probably staff's recommendation would be denial. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions, or I, we can uh, wait until the presentation is done by the applicant. Okay. Was there any questions, members of the board? No. Okay, the applicant, did you want to come forward and make a presentation? 
Were you one of these cards here? Um, Jesse? Okay. I, I think I filled it. Yeah, you did. You're, okay. okay. We just don't know who this one is. I think okay. Dan uh, is the other one. That It'll be I'd Dan. Maybe... Okay. Good, e or good afternoon, um, members of the board and staff. Um, thank you again for having us here. Um, obviously, we're very excited to to be bringing this project uh, in front of uh, the board, City of Mason staff, and, and obviously the, the local community. Um, I do have a presentation that I want to run through first. First and foremost, just to kind of give you an overview, and then I would be happy to answer any questions that you all may have after that. I do want to um, thank staff. Um, obviously, we've been working on this for a while now, um, starting back in uh, with our pre-application uh, pre meeting back in, I believe, in October. So, um, again, we, we appreciate uh, everything we've done together. I think we just came to a point that I think it was just a – um, we agree to disagree on 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 the the layout and and the success uh, of this um, development. So, if we could do the presentation. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Um, Again, we're, we're proposing to have a corner store there on the, I believe it's pad seven, which is the, the last vacant pad on the south tail end of the Riverview, um, Mesa Riverview project. Um, just to give you, this is, this is the perspective looking <clears throat> from Dobson Road. This is actually the latest, uh, the latest perspective that, that basically just l literally came off the press here. Um, this is layout actually has, as you'll see as we get into the, the, uh, some of the enlarged plans, this actually has the uh, pedestrian amenity and the connection right at the corner. That, that, was, that was one of our last discussions that we had with, uh, with Wahid. Um, if I, if I may, I just to give you a little bit of a, a quick company facts on Corner Store Brands. Um, Corner Store Brands is, is a company that was actually part of Valero up until about two years, two and a half years ago. Um, and it spun off from, from Valero and uh, basically became a publicly traded company. So, again, CST, their mission is to, you know, delight um, customers every day. Um, and, of, of course, making the, their lives a lot easier every single day. Uh, we're one of the largest independent retailers of convenience goods in North America. We employ nearly 12,000 team members. Uh, we have about 1,900 locations in the southwestern United States and eastern Canada. And we're one of the premier convenience store retailers in the United States. And, again, I, <clears throat> I wanted to give you a little bit of background because a, a lot of people may not know who Corner Store is. You, you know, you're typically... Um, familiar with, with Circle K and Quick Trip. Um, I will give you a little bit of a, a quick history on this. This is our proposed um, fourth location in, in Arizona with our, with our new image and our new prototype. Um, and again, when I say prototype, this is nothing like, like, like what our standard prototype is. But we just opened late last year the fir very first one of its kind <clears throat> In Gilbert, at uh, Pecos and Higley, and then and then literally about three weeks ago, we opened up our second one in Phoenix, over at um, 67th Avenue and uh, Latham, just south of I-10. The third one that is under construction right now, that will be open probably in about uh, three weeks, is is down in Casa Grande. Um, give you a little bit of. Uh, History on the on on as far as what do we do differently um, on the interior of the store, you know at CST we'd like to wow our customers with a positive experience, including, including clean facilities, pleasant service, and quality products. Some of the features you'll see when you enter our store are the exposed structure that we have um, at the ceiling. We do polished concrete um, floors. We don't do tile. We don't do drop ceilings that you normally see in your typical um, convenience stores. <clears throat> we, 
vibrant colors and then pendant light fixtures. Um, we also have um, our signature Fresh Choice food program, um, which we actually do. Um, we bake it in-house at the store uh, with these, the kolaches, and then we also do the tacos with homemade um, um, tortillas there. <clears throat> we have the latest uh, and greatest. Uh, if we can go to the next slide. Uh, the 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 latest in on the beverage drink um, dispensers that I'm sure you all have seen before, uh, which is what we call the uh, F to go uh, flavors to go. Um, okay. So again, I'll give you a little bit of a quick site history. Um, uh, as you know, this pad this pad is at the tail end of of the Mesa River View. Um, it has actually been vacant for the last seven years, <clears throat> for whatever reason. Um, I know Danny's Car Wash, which has, has a much more intense use than we do, was approved back in 2007, and for whatever reason was, was never built. The adjacent shops, which is just south of us, which I have some photos in here, is actually about 90% vacant, <clears throat> and it's pretty fairly unused. Again, um, I believe that it's 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 at the tail end of the of the retail center, and then with this pad not being developed, it just kind of really just goes unused and unseen. Um, again, we feel that our 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 project is a perfect use for that complements the existing retail center. I know that what he would mentioned is the fact that it <clears throat> this is a use that is not. In, in the vicinity here that I know the, for a fact that local community is in dire need for. Uh, so, I th again, we feel that it's, it's, it's uh, very complementary to the existing center. We also feel that it's actually going to spur some of the development, some possible new tenants at the shops, um, and, and basically bring back some vibrancy to that uh, tail end of the, uh, of the project. Okay. Um, Again, we're the last pad off of Dobson. Um, all the pads to the north of us are developed. Every pad that's existing there is an actual um, a fast food. Um, they have all of them have their standard prototype design, and then all of them have their standard layout that are front facing Dobson. <clears throat> you have from from the bank and uh, McDonald's to Panda Express, Taco Bell, and so forth. So again, just to provide the commissioners with a very brief history where we actually started um, at part of our back in the, the pre-app. We started with our typical layout where a typical gas station wants to do is, is have vehicular circulation around, around the store. That's, that's typical. We actually had pa parking in the back of the store. Uh, we had our loading zone at the rear as well. Um, you know, after some discussions with Corner Store, we, we, we realized that we were actually part of a premier center. So one of the things that, um, and this was something that wasn't even discussed with staff, was part of when we actually made our formal submittal um, later, that, uh, later that year, what we had done was we went ahead and located the building right up against, if you, if, next slide if you can. Sorry. Um, well, you can see it on your screen. Um, this is one where we actually uh, located the building right up against Riverview. We removed the two-way traffic. We removed the rear access that we had off of Riverview. Uh, we actually removed two of them. We removed the loading zone, and we basically put the building in a landscape setting with lush landscape, colored, the decomposed granite, uh, uh, this is this was a, the start of our proposal to put in a um, an, ex, an, an enhanced patio on the side of the of the building for the for the pedestrians. Um, the next slide, the, the next uh, not the next slide. I'm sorry. The next uh, rendering that you see down below 
This is this is a further revision that we actually did after discussions with uh, with Wahid. Um, there was concern still with some parking spaces that were right in front of the patio area, which we removed. There was also discussion about um, bordering our uh, accessible parking with landscape on both sides, which we, which we certainly did. There was also discussion with the refuse enclosure. They wanted it closer to the store so it would not create a blind spot at the corner, which, which again we did. There was discussion also that they wanted us to reduce the width of the access at the rear and the access at the entrance to the car wash, which again we did. Um, I know in the staff report it was mentioned that uh, staff had given us, um, provided some so, some ideas and alternate site options. And again, I put this in there just just as for reference. Um, this is a this is a drawing that was given to us from staff with the idea of putting a building off of Dobson with a canopy completely opposite on the side end of the of the store and then with a car wash like right in front of the store and again uh, design design is very subjective everybody has a an opinion everybody um <clears throat> you know has a different ways to um, build a mousetrap but but at the same time you know we feel that we have a uh, an excellent product excellent design but it also has to be functional and it has to make sense. So the, the next, the next uh, we did the enlarged plans in here. Um, just to give you an idea, some of the things that we did on the pedestrian amenities, we have the initial, the initial proposal that we did, which is the, the, the rendering on the left, was we had proposed a pedestrian amenity with seating area, hardscape, landscape, actually on the east side of the existing <clears throat> Riverview pylon signs that are out there. And then as you see on the right, we, we provided an enhanced patio area. We actually um, were matching the trellis elements that I believe are by the theater, which are actually a cantilever theater. Uh, we, did, we actually provided uh, five trellis elements there um, expanded the patio with with a lot more uh, seating area and a lot more landscape. We then had a follow up meeting with uh, Mr. John Wesley and um, economic development um, with Mr. William and I'm going to butcher his last name Jab Jiang I believe. Um, you know, as part of that meeting. Um, it was discussed that they actually were looking for a, a more of a direct path from the corner to our patio area. Originally, we had it a meandering sidewalk because you know everybody thinks meandering is a little bit better, and and uh, but they just felt that because uh, of the pedestrian and and having a direct path to our patio, that we should actually modify it and actually have a direct um, sidewalk, which we did. There was also discussion that. There was concern about the the access off of Riverview. Um, so one of the things that we provided <clears throat> there at the meeting that we would do was that we would go ahead and provide a pork chop that would actually limit the um, access, and we would actually do only right in, right out only. And we also provided that the the pedestrian access would would bi bisect the the pork chop. And again, the pork chop. We can certainly work with staff to enhance that even more. Um, we just haven't really had the opportunity to to really look at some of those areas, but we certainly are are open to um, if if staff feels that that should be a, you know a little bit different with a better design or what have you. We, we're certainly willing to look at. Um, one of the last discussions that I actually personally had with uh, Mr. Wahid um, was that. The pedestrian amenity that we were providing at the corner, just east of the pylon, they felt that that actually would be would go unused. So, they actually were 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 hoping that we would actually consider putting the pedestrian amenity in the seating area on the on the west side of the pylon signs, so that we would actually provide 
you know, as people are walking to or walking from, um, that we would actually provide a uh, congregating um, or refuge area, if you will, uh, while, while the lights um, is, 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 is changing. Um, and, and, and again, we, we certainly were amenable to that. And so we actually provided um, a seating area on the west side with, with hardscape, landscape, and seating area. And again, that's what was shown on the, on the perspective. Um, one of the other items that we actually incorporated was not asked of us, but um, if you see on the north side of Riverview, there's an existing sidewalk that is actually attached to the curb. So it's actually right on the curb, right off of Riverview, and there's very little shade trees on that side. So one of the things that we discussed and was one of the things that we thought it was very important was we actually, if you look on right on the very bottom, uh, very bo bottom um, figure there, is we detached the sidewalk from the curb and we provided shade trees on both sides um, to provide just a little bit of a more safety and, and, and more of, a, of an ex enhanced experience there. And, and again, that, that connection goes back to the existing sidewalk that's just uh, east of us. Um, I believe it was Tuesday morning during the study session um, uh, through the chair, I believe it was uh, Council Member Aikida that, um, that I think you had mentioned or were wondering why we had not located the car wash behind the store. And um, again, one of the things that we didn't do right off the beginning was we didn't want to mix any of the pedestrian connections with the, the car wash and the vehicle circulation. Um, if we had done that, I think we wouldn't have had this, this great landscape setting in the, in, in, at the rear. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we didn't even consider putting the, the car wash behind the, behind the store. <clears throat> uh, building architecture. Again, I'm just giving you a quick little history is, um, Again, we're, we're very proud of our prototype. We feel that, that it's, um, I know our renderings don't do it justice. Um, you almost have to see it in person, but we feel that our building is, is already of high quality. We only use natural stone. We don't do full stone. But just to give you an idea, this is the, 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 the elevation that we actually started off with as part of the pre-app. Um, once again, we had discussions with, with the staff and, and again, we felt that we understood that this was a premier center. Um, so as part of our, our submittal, follow-up submittal, we actually revamped the entire exterior. Uh, we did a full entry tower, um, a different, completely different color palette, a lot more stone. Um, and of course, we had we we had uh, pre-approved that with Kimco, and of course, they were they were obviously very ecstatic about it. Um, the other item on the canopy, the canopy again, we're not part of Valero per se, but we still offer their their brand. So one of the initials uh, as part of our pre-app, we had our canopy that is typical. I'm sure you've seen it is the typical teal with Valero image and so forth. So again, one of the things that we offered as part of our, our, our formal submittal was that we went ahead and removed the teal and we actually have a, a tan that actually matches back to the building. <clears throat> we provided the stone a little bit higher on the columns. Um, and I believe, Chair, um, um, Chairman, I believe you had a, a comment regarding it on the street side. Um, we actually have our stone columns that are actually located on the street side and, and our dispensers actually on the interior side facing the store instead of the other way around, which is typical. The next slide is, is just to give you um, basically just a, a, an overview of what our building elevations are. Um, the One of the other items is that was discussed with our meeting with uh, Mr. John Wesley they actually wanted us to incorporate some additional um, landscape and green screens around the building, which we did. 
Um, as you will see there, we, we provided the green screens on three sides and at the rear and the car wash as well. They also wanted us to expand the side entry with a trellis and then, and then additional glazing and a glass door, which, which we did. The other, the other item that I want to make sure is our canopy design is, is not your typical design. It's, it's, it's what we call the starting gate. It's just single, single load, if you will. It's not what you typically see at a Circle K or Quick Trip, which is double stack, and then you have this massive canopy. Ours is, is literally uh, quite, quite thin, as you see, in comparative to what this, this type of facilities are. Um, again, the landscape. Um, we feel we have a very comprehensive landscape palette, um, lush landscape, DG, colorful shrubs, and we've provided... Uh, several pedestrian amenities that if you looked at if you look at all the pads that are that are there none of them it, it's really more of a vehicular um, uh, driven none of them have direct um, or, or good pedestrian connections to the street uh, the landscape I'm sure is just the minimum we've gone above and beyond and we've provided these amenities that I know that that are going to serve the community and, and they're going to be used <clears throat> Uh, again, the value of the community, I think we all know that this is a use that is much needed in, in that area. Um, and we just feel that we're going to have the, the quality, not only the exterior, but the interior. And the, and, and, and um, as far as how we run our stores, I, I just think it's going to be second to none. And then if I may quickly here, try to go here faster. Uh, what I did was quickly just go through the... Um, the development review criteria that um, that staff had put together on the staff report. So I, I won't I won't take the time to read to read um, the criterias. Um, you know I know that there's mentions regarding the five elements that that are that are part of the general plan. So <clears throat> I just wanted to quickly comment on those. Again, we feel that our proposed facility was, will set a precedent and will set a bar quite high for this type of facility. We feel very proud of it. We don't have a, a prototype, what people would say a prototype. It may be what staff is saying that is a standard layout, but I gotta tell you, it's not standard layout as far as gas stations are concerned. Um, again, we feel that it's one of the last uses that, that is just missing in the Riverview um, uh, retail center and, and and we really feel strongly that it's going to really uh, bring some vibrancy to that end of the of the center um, again it's it's always it's always tough to bring in the business part uh, and the business model in into discussions when it's it's about design um, we just feel that we have gone above and beyond as far as given a high high quality exterior interior and site design with a lot of pedestrian amenities um, but at the end of the day the layout still has to work and the and, and the business still has to be successful you know one of the things that that we we were making a very large investment and, and we're proud to be part of the community but one of the things that we're very concerned about is actually uh, doing the investment with a layout that just is, is known that doesn't work. And then, you know, after the newness wears off, that we end up with a facility that is just not working. And, and, and there, there you go again, we have, a, we have an issue like what's happening with the shops that are 90% vacant. Um, so again, it's, it's not that we're sticking to our guns or we, you know, that we feel that we know better than staff. It's just a matter of, from a standpoint of a business model, um, we know that this layout works, but above and beyond that, we recognize where we're at and we've provided a lot of the pedestrian amenities. I know there's concerns about um, uh, the, the safety, and, and I got to tell you, we, we've done things in here that is much more safer than you have the sidewalk that actually connects around the, the center Every sidewalk is crossing actually a vehicular path, so is, this is not nothing different than that is already there. Uh, furthermore, none of the other areas, with the exception of I believe the the central core, which are the, where the um, 
uh, theater is, has the pedestrian amenities that we actually do. <clears throat> Number two, again, I think uh, again, I think it's just reiterating um, that it's a use that that they feel that that we really need there. Um, so again, I don't I don't really have to go through that. Number three. Is the proposed development consistent with the standards and guidelines established established for the applicable character type? And again, the the uh, the staff report goes in through um, a lot of items that come off the general plan. <clears throat> and and one of the things that I bolded here as part of what's on the staff report and the general plan is if you look at one of the items there that I bolded in blue is the primary goal of this character type is to provide high quality opportunities for commercial and enter entertainment activities consist consistent with the needs of today's consumer. Again, the goal is there to bring in vibrant businesses that are successful for the long term. <clears throat> um, one of the primary goals that is found in the general plan for mixed use activity district, which we are, which actually were the, the regional scale district, is to promote a mix of uses and provide the best possible opportunity to, for, to be strong and viable centers of commercial activity. Um, what I put in there in, in black is, 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 is excerpts that come directly out of the general plan. Suburban in design and form with auto-dominated characteristics, but more urban forms that balance autos with pedestrians are encouraged for new developments and redevelopments. Again, we feel strongly that we've done both. Building and parking fields should be located on the property, establish a connection to the street, and promote walkability between building, buildings. Again, we've, we've, we feel that we've gone above and beyond. The buildings usually set back from the street by parking fields. Again, this comes directly off of the general plan on the regional district and the mixed-used activity district. Um, now, all the pads that are off of Dobson are vehicle oriented, all have parking against Dobson. We, we're not having any parking off of Dobson. That was one of the things that, that it just doesn't make sense. You don't, you don't want to really have parking on the other side of the canopy. So that's one of the differences that we have is that we don't have any parking right off of Dobson. <clears throat> one of the items that we haven't really had a chance to talk to staff is, you know, we're willing to expand on the landscape off of Dobson. Um, if that's something that that staff and commission would be willing to, to look at, um, we would certainly be, be open to that to add, you know, um, five, ten feet or what have you for more landscaping um, on, the, on the east side of the screen wall. Number four, Again, there's a lot of a lot of uh, verbiage in here that are kind of grabbed from different places of the general plan and put in here. Um, so quickly, I'll just go to the next slide. Where um, again, uh, and I'm repeating myself here, but again, we feel that we're filling a void, uh, much needed um, use, and we're doing it in a vacant pad that has been. Um, I'm sorry, in a pad that has been vacant for the last seven years, and I'm sure is an eyesore for everybody. Um, and we really feel that this is going to, again, bring the vibrancy to that end of the center uh, for some of the tenants on the shop. <clears throat> um, again, we politely disagree with staff's assessment that our proposed development fails to provide an, any enhancement of street streetscape and connectivity to the area. We again, we feel very strongly that we have done, we have a design here that meets the needs and have balanced both the vehicular and the pedestrian amenities uh, of the consumer. The second excerpt that he uh, that staff have has on here with the public spaces uh, P two, um, and again I bring this directly off the general plan that was um, public spaces should be readily accessible both visually and physically. People need to see their destination and clearly be delineated how to enter and exit the space. The space needs to be placed adjacent to pedestrian circulation routes 
and designed to generate interest and engagement for pedestrian. Public spaces need to be located in places that are part of people's everyday patterns of travel and connected to surrounding uses so as to be easily accessible from a number of directions and modes of transportation. A, sp a public space do not, does not exist independent of its surroundings. Co consideration should also be given to the access routes to adjoining uses and activities and where the doors and windows are to take advantages of traffic. Provide views where needed and reduce views where inappropriate must be inviting and comfortable. Public spaces must look, feel, and be safe. And, and one of the things that I put in here <clears throat> and that's actually part of the, part of the general, plan, general plan, through SEPTED principles, spaces need to be designed such that activities are taking place on a regular basis so there is natural surveillance. There needs to be sufficient lighting to provide a secure nighttime environment. Um, again, we feel that we have done that and far uh, <clears throat> exceeded the expectation of it. I quickly put in some, some uh, direct excerpts from the SEPTED uh, design guidelines that are also resounded on the SEPTED in the city of Mesa. <clears throat> again, crime prevention through environmental design utilizes design features to increase the visibility of a property or a building, keeps intruders under observation, greater visibility makes legitimate uses feel safer, uses open style design that maxes, maximizes visibility, illuminated building entrance, pedestrians and parking areas, uh, watch for landscape conflicts, orient building entrances toward high traffic pedestrian and vehicular areas. <clears throat> use internal and external windows as well as activity areas to increase passive surveillance. So again, not only does we feel that from a business model standpoint, uh, locating the building that is not your typical, whether it's, whether it's facing uh, rear facing Riverview or rear facing Dobson, not only does it not work from a business, uh, business model standpoint, we are very concerned that we actually, uh, we are actually creating something that, that would actually be a detriment to the pedestrian experience. We have a building that would be up against Riverview that at the end of the day, no matter what you, you put lipstick, uh, lipstick on the pig, it's the back of the building, it's the back of the services, and we would actually create where all the pedestrian amenities are happening right behind the building. We do not have a clear visibility to the pedestrian. <clears throat> Um, and again, through the septet, it's just something that, you know, we just would never do a building that actually has its back to the store. Um, we've been in several agencies that that actually is something that they do not like because the, the law enforcement doesn't have a clear visibility into the store or the, the happenings on that's, that are occurring on the, on the interior of the site. Um, Number four, P P four, again. Bear with me here. Well, let me let me let me move on to the let me move on to number five. I think number four is basically it just reemphasizes the open space and 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 the viability of that um, development review criteria. Does the proposed development provide appropriate transitions between uses in more urban areas? These transitions should generally be accomplished by design elements that allow adjacent buildings to be in <clears throat> close proximity to one another. In, in more suburban area locations, these transitions should be addressed through separation of uses in our screen. Again, staff feels that the proposal does not create a ne necessary transition between the regional park and regional commercial center. <clears throat> design needs to be emphasized the connection to the corner um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And again, once again, we respectfully disagree with staff. Um, on the contrary, we completely feel that we've <clears throat> designed a, 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 a store that works not only from the vehicular, but the pedestrian. We've, we've, we've designed a clear delineated pedestrian path, um, that there's no questions for the pedestrians. We've, we've went ahead and, 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 and we're amenable to creating the exterior on the um, west side of the corner for additional seating, additional congregating, which we don't have any problem. Um, 
again, I just want to make sure that we have created um, quite a bit of, of hardscape, landscape, pedestrian amenities that, that I have to tell you, aside from the from the theater, you don't see anywhere else, and um, especially on any of the retail pads. Um, Number six, compliance with the character areas based on both the zoning being consistent with the range of zoning designations approved for each character type and on the development form, design, and quality being consistent with the standards and guidelines provided in this plan, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, although the zoning and proposed use are consist consistent with the character type for the area, staff's conclusion the design layout of the site is not consistent. Again, we, we have to politely disagree because... Uh, at the end of the day, we are part of, a, of an existing uh, regional scale district with multiple retail pads along Dobson. Um, we're filling a void, a much needed void in goods, but we're doing it in a very sensible and highly designed <clears throat> both, both building and, and layout. Um, and again, in closing, um, again, reiterating that we're very we're very happy to be part of, of coming in for Mesa Riverview and part of the Mesa uh, community um, and staff. Um, we are very confident that staff and commissioners, city council, will look to this building, this this development, as, as setting the precedent and the bar for future future retails of this kind. They will look to us to not only from the architecture, from the site design, the pedestrian amenities, things that you could actually do with this type of facility that normally you don't do, um, I really, really feel that, that, that staff is going to be looking at us as, 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 as an example. Um, again, our, our, our goal is not only to provide a commu the community with a much needed service, like I said at the beginning, we also, our intent is to be a vibrant and successful business, um, something that we want to be there for a long time, um, and we just don't want to do something that just we feel doesn't do anything different by rotating the building, doesn't provide anything different that we're not providing uh, with this layout. And again, I just, I just I look to the commission just, just to take our rationale into consideration we just would hate to lose, uh, we would hate to not only lose from our end, but the city lose a very quality product that is going to fill a void and it's going to finally um, develop that vacant pad that has been there for, for a long time. So again, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, yeah, I did have a question. Where are you at with your citizen participation plan and your design? We sent that, and, and we, we actually, and, and again, um, we had verified early on if that was something that was required, and, and you know, we, we, we made the mistake of getting, you know, we misinterpreted, so that's completely on us. Um, so as soon as what he let us know on that, we sent out that notification. As of today, um, we have not received one single email, phone call, or anything in the mail as far as anything either negative or, or positive. When did that go out? That went out, I uh, believe, Pat. April the 1st. Okay, about 15 days. Yes. Okay, and then you're still in the DR process, the design review? Well, uh, part of the design, we were supposed to actually be uh, in study session yesterday, but the hearing, the, the, the meeting got canceled, so it's actually rescheduled for tomorrow at 4 o'clock so or 5 o'clock. We should have all that information at the May meeting. That's correct. Okay, any other questions, board members? Yes, I have a question. Uh, you mentioned that you had four other uh, locations, is that correct? For, uh, three, three new ones that are part of Corner Store and our new development, so one on, in Gilbert and one in Phoenix. Are there any of those other ones, are they going to be any, I'm talking about uh, uh, the car wash and uh, the store itself, are any of them that you already have built going to be like the one that uh, you were planning over at Riverview? The reason why I'm asking, there are some people that have asked me if there were other, so they can actually see you know what the finished product was going to look like. Yes, so. yes. Both 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 projects that are actually built, um, and I and when I say that is 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 it's very similar to this, but at the same time very different. <laughs> Where are they located? Sixty seventh Avenue and, and Latham, which is just south of I ten. Fifty seventh Avenue and where? Sixty uh, seventh Avenue. Oh, well, sixty seventh Avenue and where and, and I ten. Just north of Roosevelt or south of the I ten. 
And, and the other one in Gilbert is at the southwest corner of Pecos and Higley. Uh, and again, all of them have... Pecos and Higley? Yes, sir. Okay. And they're similar to the product that uh, you're it, going to build, it, is that correct? It, it, it's similar from a standpoint that uh, it's the same size of the building. We have our car wash, but it is more to the prototypical design that we have that I showed you at the very beginning, although it's a very, very handsome building, and you can see, you can, I, I encourage you to go see both, both projects so you can get the feel of the interior. Uh, none of those, those facilities, and including the one that's in Casa Grande, we built, uh, have the quality that have Your landscaping, there. I can see, is uh, far more extensive than Absolutely. probably what the other ones are. <laughs> None of them. Yeah, the reason why I'm asking, because I, like I did mention before, that I have had some people ask me if they could drive by and take a look and see mm -hmm. what kind of a finished product they have. And uh, because of the notices, I received one of your notices because I own some property uh, nearby there. And I was kind of surprised to see it because, you know, we haven't even talked about it. And, and I get a notice. So... I don't think there's been enough uh, leeway uh, for the, you know, for the uh, citizens to uh, really talk about or even go out and see. So I think it's very important that uh, we get hear uh, people from the public uh, to mention it because it is an important project. Uh, Riverview itself, uh, you know, is a very important project, and uh, we'd like to try to upscale some of the products that have been going in there. Some of the other things that have gone in there, well, they're in there now. And when you make, when you say that you're developing this one and there's a lot of vacant spaces, I don't think those vacant spaces that you're talking about on the southwest corner there are going to get filled up because you're going to build your product there. I, I just don't see that happening. However, I would like to see a, a quality product there, but I'd like to hear what other, what other citizens are going to say about them. That's why it's important that... Uh, uh, I hear those voices. Through the chair, Commissioner Akita, I, I completely agree. Now, you know, part of our, our, our um, notices did go out and, and made a mention that there was a planning commission, um, not only the study session, but the planning commission today. Um, I think there was some verbiage in there regarding the city council, which obviously this doesn't go to city council. That was one of the other items that we corrected. Um, so there was plenty of... of um, posting and notices for people to be here, if, the public, um, that I think that they would have. If, um, so, again. Any other questions from the board? Questions yeah, I'm still a little confused as to what the conflict's all about. You know, I'm looking at your renderings and all the color and all the lushness of the landscaping at. Looks pretty impressive from that standpoint, if that's what this is about. Yeah, but there are only so many ways you can lay out a facility like this, you know, and make it work. So just very succinctly, you know, what is the real issue, as you see it, between you and staff right now? Through the chair, uh, Commissioner Clement, um, I appreciate the comment. Um, I think it, it, it really comes down to uh, we agree to disagree that even though we have a very high-quality product, not only on the exterior design site layout and the interior design, uh, at the end of the day, they want our, the building oriented in a different manner that we just don't feel works from not only a business model and we just don't feel that, that it creates anything more enhanced that we're already doing and it's going to create a lot of issues with uh, surveillance and so forth. So that's, that's the It's bottom. the orientation. It's the orientation, sir. And whereas you, you, you desire to have it face tops and they would prefer, staff would prefer to have it face which way? Well, it started off with facing facing Dobson or the rear facing Dobson, and then the last one was to f uh, rear facing Riverview. Okay. But you're looking for the traffic. In, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So you want the traffic flow, so it's the access, visibility. the visibility. Both from a from a not only that we feel that. Um, We've done everything from a pedestrian vehicular circulation. We've limited the access from off of Riverview so that it's right in, right out only. Um, and again, at the end of the day, it still has to function. It still has to work. Um, I don't think we're, we're asking for anything different than, than what's there, but f far above, we're creating an uh, enhanced uh, design that nobody has in that area. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Allen. 
I had a question, and, and it's probably for staff and possibly as well as you. Um, the uh, My question is, um, Waheed, have we had, um, I'm sure th through part of your site plan review, you have had our SEPTED, our PD folks take a look at it, at the site, and have they looked at it uh, as far as, you know, with the back of the building, either facing Riverview or facing Dobson? Yes, we did share the uh, uh, submitted proposed layout with our subject uh, staff, and their comment was also that this will have some issues, surveillance from, and then we shared also that staff, planning staff is asking for an orientation a little bit different than, so subject said, like, that's possible. Subject had the issue, one is the view from Dobson, and then also the driveway access from Riverview Road, which is so close mm -hmm. uh, that it will back up because when you're trying to come from Dobson on a signal, let's say left turn, you're not only coming to this property, you're also going further east. So everybody else that who is turning to come into this gas station yeah. is backing up the folks who are behind them and, and the only green light is there and everybody wants to... So regarding this, one thing just as an observation, which we don't see anywhere else that much, and I'm very proud of it, on Dobson, all the pad buildings north of here doesn't have individual cut or individual driveway access from Dobson. They are all internally linked. That bank from this property across the street, the existing bank building, they don't have any access from the river view. They don't have any access from Dobson even. Their only access, if you want to go to the bank, you have to come through the other pad buildings. There are a couple of pads building as you go north on Dobson Road. And they're like fast food, they're bank, they're pretty intense uh, traffic. But one good thing is you don't have every, every business has a curb cut in front of them. So that was also our subtext concern is that it's coming too close. Uh, my other my other question on that too is, I assume that the on-site retention <clears throat> is, and I think I, I that that's a required on-site retention for the mm -hmm. landscape area, and is there a possibility for that to be relocated elsewhere? I mean, because of the drainage on the site, is that going to? The retention is required. I'm not the engineering site, no, so, uh, yeah. but I uh, we have seen if you do underground retention, they're not going to say no. Right. Well, that's true. Um, and then maybe my question goes back uh, to you guys. I know that you had some issues about just for the visibility, wanting to orient it. Um, and I guess my, my issue on this, and I need to express that to you, is I think that although they're, the pedestrian connections and everything else are great, I mean, that's exactly what we're looking for to make this site different than everything else. It's, it's the view of the, the fuel canopies that are out in front. I just think there's maybe a way that that we can orient the site to where it's beneficial to you and, it, and it, um, it meets your goals as well as meeting the staff goals. I just think that there's a way that maybe a little bit more work needs to be done on that. That's just my point of view. Board Member Dalkey. Um, I had one question of Mr. Macias and then a couple of staff. Uh, you said you'd be willing to install additional trees on the Dobson Road frontage. Uh, how many? more trees would you be willing to put, thinking that it might provide more of a screen of the canopy? Sure. Through the Chair, Commissioner Dalkey, thank you very much. <clears throat> One of the things that we're already adding is we're already adding landscape and trees on the east side of the screen wall. Um, and if you look at um, the very first rendering that you see on there, um, we actually have trees at the immediate corner that we actually whited out so that you could actually see the store, otherwise you wouldn't. But in reality, you, you'll have trees in there that actually are blocking that visibility. One of the things that I offered um, um, Commissioner Dalkey was we would be willing to add width to the landscape area, which, which in turn would add more shrubs and more trees as well. So that's one of the things that we hadn't really had an opportunity to discuss with staff, but we're willing to to look at that and add more depth on the on the front end, which would be the east side of the screen wall. Um, again, we're not only meeting the, the the code; we're 
we're far above what, what's required out of us on the landscape ballot. So we're certainly willing to work with staff on that, uh, Commissioner Dalkey. Just mother ones for staff, he said? Yeah, just, uh, I wanted to confirm on the site plan, it looks like there's just, there's no left turn um, to River View okay. Auto Drive, but on the landscape plan, it shows it. So I just wanted to make sure there is no left turn. Right. Correct. Okay. And then just what is your response to Mr. Macias's arguments against moving the canopy, especially the having the rear of the building along Dobson and um, just the visibility? I'm just interested in what you think. Chair, Chair, uh, Board Member Dalkey, as we have looked at this uh, from the staff perspective, <clears throat> we believe, uh, and, and also as we continue to get the input, and particularly from uh, talking with the folks in PD, as, as Mr. Alam just mentioned, the building were rotated 90 degrees, so it sided into uh, to Dobson and had that, that same landscape area that they now show on the north side there on the west side and that same you know, west entry, what's now north entry on the, on the west side and the canopy to the south of that. Uh, they would still have very good visibility from Dobson. Everybody would see and know that it, what it is is a convenience store with, with the gas canopies in place to get gas. But by doing that, we eliminate that drive from the gas canopies directly out onto uh, Review Drive. And that significantly improves then the pedestrian connection uh, through that area that's been so important, uh, as well as improving the visibility from along Dobson that, that uh, Board Member Allen was, was talking about. And uh, we think it improves overall safety. Again, the, the police department thinks it's a better orientation, too, uh, for their, uh, their work and, and uh, the access to the site. And while that would put a back of the store along Mesa Riverview uh, Drive, and those are uh, somewhat challenging, we think uh, the architect's coming up with a lot of good ideas for how to address the design of the building. And given the other uh, safety issues and overall pedestrian concerns, we think we can live uh, with that particular aspect. Um, yeah, did you have some follow-up? Sure. Just through the, the chair, I just wanted to um, comment quickly on a couple of items on, from staff. <clears throat> I know that there's not um, a curb cut at every retail pad or the, the fast food on Dobson, but there are, there are some access points that are existing right now. Um, so it's not just completely, you know, just Dobson Road until you get to the next drive. Um, Regarding um, staff's comments regarding the uh, potential conflict on uh, with vehicular circulation into the into the canopy, that was one of the one of the items why we we provided the pork chop so that it would limit the circulation and people aren't trying to make a left left out and it really would create a congestion in there. You know, customers are going to know how to enter and, and exit this facility once it's open. People that want to get back on Dobson are not even going to go to the uh, Riverview access that we provide unless they're going back over to the center or to the theater or what have you. People are going to know their patterns and what they can and cannot do. And if somebody that wants to go back north, they'll go back on Dobson off of our access that's just farther south. Um, so we just don't agree that, that there's any issues there with, with safety. Um, you know, I, I would, I would, I, we didn't see any actual comments from SEPTED. Um, I know that there, I know the staff report mentions that there was possible concerns with the spacing of our, of our opening for the pedestrian connection. But, but again, um, we're actually a lot less than what's actually existing. Every pedestrian connection within the center is actually crossing at some point a vehicular uh, path. We've actually shrunk the driveway, added the pork chop, so it's actually shrunk the path in there. But um, again, I just want to make a note for, for the record that we actually had not seen anything regarding SEPTED, actual comments from SEPTED. Okay. Um, Thank you. I think that's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. And then we have one speaker. Dan wishes to speak. Please read your name and address into the record since we don't have it on here. You have three minutes. My name is Dan Lupi, and I'm Senior Director of Real Estate for Kimco Realty and Mesa Riverview. My address is 7214 East Royal Palm Road in Scottsdale, Arizona, 85258. I've been employed at Kimco for 11 years, so I've been here uh, throughout the entire process, Riverview and the development in its infancy. 
Uh, we've struggled, obviously, on the, south, uh, the, the southern portion of the shopping center with connectivity issues from the shop buildings. We call them shops uh, E and F. They're just to the south of here. Um, when I'm standing there with potential tenants, this large two and a half acre lot just seems like a visual barrier, whether it's an actual barrier or not, the optics suggest otherwise to the prospective tenants. So we've struggled and um, I thought the architect did a very good job art articulating uh, what we're trying to do here. I would just like uh, everybody to, to take a second and think about how the site functions today um, with the life safety issues of all the traffic going back and forth throughout the park. Um, this design, I think, does a very good job addressing a lot of those issues. Uh, we'd hate to see something uh, bad here happen just because we couldn't come to terms on, on the orientation of the building. I think the stacking, the pedestrian stacking that the architect has designed here uh, at, the, at the light, which allows benches for parents to tell their kids to sit down on the bench while the light's changing, and anyone that has children knows that it's a, that's a, an important thing to have. We'd love to see... Um, you know, this, be, this what I would call one of the nicest sea store gas stations in the valley. Um, this is a big step up for us. I think it will set the tone for this area of the shopping center and uh, will, help, uh, will help energize this, this area. It's a much needed void for the park. I think we're all trying to service the community here and uh, try to identify uh, uh, uses that complement the park, that complement the Cub Stadium, that complement Riverview. Uh, right now, for you to get these services, you have to drive quite a ways. So uh, from many different levels, this, I think, is a big step up from what exists today. Uh, obviously, it's been like this for seven years. Um, we don't have any other prospective tenants looking at this parcel. So um, there could be uh, a long time before we're back here in front of the board again. So I hope that we can use this opportunity to address a lot of the issues at hand if we I think if we try to force the tenant to reorientate the position of the of the C store, the, the deal will go away and, and we'll be stuck with a, a vacant parcel with no sidewalk, no pedestrian stacking, a lot and a life safety issue. So I just hope we keep that in mind and certainly appreciate everybody's consideration. Any questions, board? Nope. Okay, thank you no, very thank much. You. Okay, this is set to be on continuance for the May twentieth meeting. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion that we uh, continue case number uh, Z1512 to May 20th, 2015. Yes. Is there a second? I second. Okay, let's vote. Okay, that was unanimous with Debella absent. And I think that concludes today's planning and zoning uh, meeting. We are adjourned. <laughs>